Today's episode explores a medical condition that's crucial to know inside and out, not just for acing the NPTE, but also for making a meaningful difference in clinical practice and everyday life. Physical therapists are uniquely skilled to tackle this condition, and knowing it well sets you up for excellence in both your exams and real-world interventions. Welcome back to the NPTE StudyCast, your indispensable guide for mastering the NPTE. Today, we're unraveling the intricacies of Parkinson's disease. You can't afford to miss this, so let's dive in, and don't forget to click subscribe. All right, so what is Parkinson's disease? Follow me. Imagine your brain is a bustling city. Parkinson's disease is a roadblock and a critical highway, the substantia nigra. This causes a neurodegenerative traffic jam, meaning it's a slow decay of nerve cells in the brain. Dopamine, the brain's VIP currency for smooth controlled movements, is getting stolen right from the bank vault. Now, what's the fallout? A city your brain, struggling with movement and coordination. So what causes Parkinson's disease? If that substantia nigra we mentioned is the highway, what puts the roadblock there? Well, good question. It's like asking why there's traffic on a Monday morning. Could be a lot of reasons. Often, all at once. Genetics, environmental toxins, age. It's a mix of elements, a cocktail of culprits, if you will. The symptoms of Parkinson's disease are like the dashboard warning lights of your body. You've got motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. Now, on the motor side, we have tremors, which are like your body's unwelcome vibration feature. Then there's bradykinesia. Think of that as your internal motor running low on battery. Rigidity? That's your muscles acting like they're in a never-ending flexing contest. And let's not forget about postural instability. It's like trying to balance a book on your head while walking on a tightrope. Now, on the non-motor side, expect issues like depression and even sleep disturbances. This thing is a full-body affair. Now, what can PTs do about it? This is where you come in, future PTs. Imagine you're a traffic engineer, a choreographer, and a coach all rolled into one. You're not just directing the flow, you're refining the moves. Exercise programs, balance training, and techniques to unfreeze gait are all tools in your multifaceted toolbox. Let's take a question from one of you in the audience. This one's from Mike from the PT program at USC. Mike says, I'm curious about these unfreezing gait techniques. How can we help get our patients get their groove back? Mike, excellent question. We want you to think of gate freezing like a buffering video. To get it playing smoothly again, let's try tactics like marching in place. It's like hitting the refresh button on that frozen browser. It gets the brain's attention and often gets your patient moving again. Mike, thanks again for asking that question. Here's your first mock NPTE question. A patient with Parkinson's disease has been referred to physical therapy due to shuffling gait, which the following is the most effective cueing strategy for improving gait in such a patient. Option one, auditory cues. Option two, visual cues. Option three, tactile cues. Or option four, no cueing is effective. I'll give you a second to think about those. Here goes. The answer to that question is visual cues are the most effective. Research indicates that patients with Parkinson's disease respond well to visual cues, such as lines on the floor, when it comes to improving gait. Let's jump into another mock NPTE question. Here goes. A physical therapist is working on postural stability with a patient suffering from Parkinson's disease. Which of the following exercises is least effective? for this goal. Here are your options. Sit to stand exercises, Tai Chi, leg curls, or balance exercises on an unstable surface. Think about those options for a second. I'll wait. Now, which of the, those exercises was least effective for your goal? Leg curls are the least effective at achieving your goal. 
Now, while they may improve hamstring strength, they're not specifically aimed at improving postural stability in patients with Parkinson's disease. I hope this video was effective for you to get a little bit more understanding on the intricacies of Parkinson's disease. Take that information you learned today with you on exam day. If you liked what you heard here, don't forget to click subscribe.